Today we're going to discuss webhooks, what they are, how you can incorporate them into your website, and then how you go about practical testing your webhook integration with other sites in your local development environment. First, we need to figure out what is a webhook. A webhook I look at is a reverse API. A third-party service such as Stripe or Twilio or Facebook it's going to call a URL on my website and I need to process the data they give to me. So let's actually go ahead and take a look at how this works. First thing is I need a place for the webhook to call. In this case I'm going to give it a URL of my site slash hook and it's going to go to a process hook view. We'll jump out and then open up our views. We'll take a look at our process hook view. It's very basic. Data is going to be posted to our server. And then in this case, we're just going to print it out and we're going to print out the JSON that would be given to us. Normally, you would actually have some sort of processing code that would look and inspect and then actually do what needs to be done beyond that. If you'll also notice, use the CSRF exempt mixin for this class based view. So if we want to go ahead and take a look at this in action, can start up our server and then we'll just do a simple curl and we'll go ahead and post some JSON and that just outputs on our server side there foobar in a dictionary. If this was all the complicated that it was to actually deal with webhooks then we could just do this all day long and we'd be fine but unfortunately we might get a little more complicated of a data structure and a bit longer and it would look something like this. In that case, that's where it gets a little tedious to type it out every time or keep it in a notepad of some sort and copy and paste that data structure. To make all of that a little bit easier, there is a tool called ngrok. If you'll go to ngrok.com, go to download, you can download a binary and extract it. It's available for Mac OS X, Windows, and Linux. And in a lot of cases, you can install it using your Linux provider, apt-get, or in Arch, you can do a Pac-Man. It's also available in NPM. So to actually run ngrok, we're going to open that up and just run it like normal, and we're going to tell it a port on our computer of what to route everything to. From there, it does a bunch of interesting things. It connects to the ngrok server and creates a tunnel and it creates a tunnel to the http colon 736f0c80.ngrok.com now anyone on the internet can actually hit that url and it'll route it straight through to our application on our port 8000 this is great because if you're doing integration with say twilio and they needed to be able to call your computer to get twimmel back then they could call this URL with the rest of the URL structure and it would hit the, the local web server, you would generate your data and send it back. It's great for testing. You don't need to worry about doing crazy port forwarding on your network or try to do some funky development on a third party server or anything like that. And Grok really makes it easy. It's also a web interface so that you can see what's going on and we'll cover that here in a little bit. So next what we can do is we'll just go ahead and replace our curl request with the ngrok and then make sure we add our slash hook. Going to do our data and call it and there we go. Same result back. Then we can even do it with our little short one as well of our foo bar and it posts that as well. And that's really all there is to it. Well, now let's go ahead and take a look at the web interface. It's on localhost 4040. And it looks a lot better in higher resolution than 800 by 600. But you have a history of all of the things that have happened. You can click on them and you can see the, the data that was sent. You can see the previous ones that were sent as well. And you can go through and you can see the summary, the headers, raw data, and even binary data. And then the greatest feature of all, I think, is you have a replay button. And that just replays that request over and over and over again many many times and this reduces the amount of work that you have to do on the third party server in trying to create new scenarios just to go ahead and get the same data back over and over and you can continually practice practical test it and try to root out bugs without continually trying to do stuff on the test environment of the server 
I had to track down a bug in doing some Stripe integration. And this really saved my butt because I had to trace through the depths of a bunch of code and put an IPDB statements to really start trying to go through and being able to just hit replay over and over and over and over again really really helped in narrowing down the problem i eventually found it and solved it but it was like a 15 step process to generate that original request so i would have had to done that every single time without the help of ngrok and that's it for this episode i hope you found it useful and this is a great tool to add to your arsenal and there are a lot more uses than just testing with webhooks i hope you'll actually download it and give it a shot and maybe also look at services that provide webhooks Oftentimes services provide webhook integration, but nobody takes advantage of them, and they can offer you a great deal of extra information and a lot more processing of what's going on.